Hello, hello everybody, welcome back. We got The Ricky Gervais Show, Season 1, Episode 8, Nuts Today. Um, we don't know what kind of nuts they're talking about, but since it's Ricky, Carl, and Steven, we know what kind of nuts they're talking about, I betcha. <laughs> I betcha, but whatever. I don't know why they always go to those topics. Every time, every clip, every episode. <laughs> Just, it's always mentioned. But anyway, let's do this. I am ready. Okay. I thought I messed something up. We're good, we're good. Alright, I am ready for the introduction and everything. Because it's cute. It's like all dramatic and everything. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, I also and really Carl like that voice. have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that alright? That voice brings me back. Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> I love it. It's too cute. <laughs> okay. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. Emily from New York has asked uh, Carl this. Carl, if you were on a, a, a sinking ship or you were in a, a burning building and you were with uh, myself and Ricky, but you could only save one of us, I don't know why that's the case, but you could only of save course. one of us, yeah. who would you save? Would it Is be it, Ricky or would it be me? I think it's a two-man dinghy. Right, OK. Possibly. And we're trapped and he knows that if he stays there to get both our legs out from under this thing... <laughs> the girder. Yeah, he falls. dies, so he's got, so he's got room, he's got time to save one. It's obviously okay. me. Um, it's hard to say, isn't it, at this point? What, because Steve's situation. in the room, you mean? Well, no, just, just because we, we don't know what, what the situation is. <laughs> OK, well, let's say we're on a, we're on a sinking ship, all right? So you're going to have to rescue one of us, drag us into the dinghy. It's, it's going under. You know, you know in 30 seconds, OK, this ship's going to go under and drag you down and you're going to die, right? Uh, and our legs are trapped and you've got enough time to untangle one untangle. set of legs. Okay. <laughs> Whose legs do you untangle? Now, just because my legs are long does not necessarily mean it's more complicated. No, it's exactly the same amount of time. <laughs> just have to make a choice. Terrible. A terrible choice that Steve would would not, um, you know, hate you for. Well, no, listen, this is... Well, we'll be around for long. He's going to drown in 30 seconds. Well, Forget him. <laughs> so, bear in mind this, Carl. You are going to be stuck in a dinghy with Ricky Gervais, and who knows how long that's going to take. Yeah. Think of all the head squeezing that's going to be going on, the comments, the wind-up. And he do you honestly think that point. he's going to... If there's any provisions, that he's going to split them evenly with you? <laughs> I mean, he's going to have drunk all the water and there's only going to be about half his an hour in. His lips are all cracked. The food's going to be gone. Look at his gut. Look how much, you know, the, oh. of the food he's going to have to eat, the baked beans that you've got on board. Come or on. it's me. You know how generous I am. I'm always sort of oh, helping you Oh, there we out. go. Carl, he's, I think he's uh, put the nail in his own coffin there. You know how generous I am, Carl. Let's talk about that, Carl. Come on, think about that one. Yeah, I mean, have, have you forgot about that, Steve? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The time, the time when... We went for a coffee, and we had to have a bit of a heated debate about the 50 pence change. <laughs> yeah, you owed me 50p, oh, and you it. decided you didn't want to give it to me because it was only 50p. And my point was, it's not a question of 50p, it's the fact that it's not your decision to decide not to give it to me. If I wanted to be generous, that's my decision. <laughs> but you can't go, oh, it's only 50p, well, Steve. It's my decision. It was but you just, you just given him a free keg of beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, but yes, but that was that did not come to you. You didn't pay for the free keg of beer. Doesn't it was matter. a promotional thing that was sent Doesn't to you. Matter. It's the same thing as the way I gave Suzanne my leaving present from my last job. A lot of people may not be aware of this if they haven't heard us talking about it before. Yes, but you had a gift from your work as you were leaving after however many years of service, yeah. which okay. you then gave straight to your girlfriend without telling her that it had been received from uh, people at work. Doesn't matter. She wanted a camera. It's the same thing as you. You wanted that lager that I got for free. It hasn't yeah. cost you anything. It doesn't matter where I got it from. So you now decide, because you've given me a free credit lager, that you can now say, oh, actually, I'm not, uh, you know, in the future, I'll just take your money, Steve, on a whim. Well, uh, listen, stop just... arguing us. You're rocking the dinghy. Carl, <laughs> have some of my cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine if he would, do you imagine he would ever say that? Do you imagine him ever, <laughs> ever offering you any of his cheese? It's on a plate say, and everything. I, I don't want to say. Well, think about it and... I might do a sort of a... A for and against or something, and then sort of so the conclusion is okay. All right. Well, I've been waiting for this for a week. Um, it's a regular feature now. When uh, we read from Carl's diary, Carl decided to keep a diary. Okay. He's gone through with it. I could see it there. It's massive. <laughs> it's a huge desk diary that he has to carry around. The sound uh, effect, I love it. And uh, 
He, uh, is, the pages are getting full up. Are you, you're really keeping to this? Yeah. Right, yeah. this is uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. <laughs> Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses. They hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that what? I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> Okay. A cow, a chicken, some fish. Right. An octopus is an odd-looking thing alive. Even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. I agree with you. Did few we just witness? Probably... Ricky agreed with Car. It's like the stupidest thing ever, but he just, he literally agreed. I love that. I don't even agree. This is like the first time. I don't even... Well, I don't know if I agree or not. No, I don't agree. <laughs> I hate eating things that look cute. It's horrible. No matter how delicious. But I can't believe he, he agrees. <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. Okay. Everyone got a point will there. eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What, what are you talking about? It's just some kid. Uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just like a kid with like a blue jumper on, and he's it's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box, really awful, sort of sugary. And what happened is it, they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever. And the weird thing was. Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, because every house had that picture in the fucking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> you're talking shit again. Carry on. Wednesday. Carry on. You're Saw talking shit, bloke. but carry on. <laughs> I'm surprised that no companies have thought about sponsoring the homeless. Something like a clothing company. Give them some clothes that have an advert on the back. Everyone's a winner. Good idea. Not bad, is it? Got on the tube to Camden, read in a free newspaper that hedgehogs could be gone by 2025. I think I've okay. seen more dead hedgehogs than alive ones anyway, so I don't think I'll miss them. <laughs> Went round to Ricky's house and had a game of pool. It should have been nice and relaxing, but Jane gave me some cake and Ricky said, I can't play pool if my hands are all sticky from there, It was the sugar. It was, and it wasn't that either. After he'd finished it, they weren't just sticky, he was licking his fingers, sucking his fingers off, That's and gross. then was going to pick up ball cues and touch things. And I was thinking, go and wash your hands after licking your hands. You know, like, <laughs> I hate when people do this that. This turned in. Dude, I, and people do that all the time and I hate it. The other day I went bowling um, with my brother and, and just family and... Um, we were bowling and like you could eat while being there like the bowling part had little tables and the way would waiter would come and it was all like finger food it wasn't even like i don't know things with toothpicks it was all just basically finger food and all like the greasiest oilies like french fries covered in cheddar and bacon and, and just like all that and then the same fingers they don't even really did barely bring even a napkin and then the people use the same fingers to like put their hands you know in the bowling balls and stuff and you can see all the people around you just like nah, just licking their fingers and then putting that's disgusting dude that's so gross that is so gross and i also have the same issue when people come over and stuff and they're like eating chips or whatever and then they're using the joystick for the xbox or whatever console and it's just like it like don't get dorito dust on the joystick dude it's not, <laughs> especially the white one like that bothers me whether it's the food or you lick it off no just go wash your hands i'm totally with ricky on that into one. an argument when i said i didn't want to wash my hands why didn't he Disgusting. he goes for a piss all the time without washing his hands and then squeezes my head How i know i prefer know? to have lemon cake crumbs on my head than knob juice oh god that sounds disgusting. Okay. I was going to do a crossword, but I'm tired and have learned enough today. What have you learned? Learned enough. Well, the stuff about hedgehogs and that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That I was, was on my way to my okay. mates and I got on a train. Got close to a station but realised I needed a wee. Was about to go in a cubicle when a blind man with a dog who was bumbling his way through the walkway came around. I said, are you after the toilet? He said, yeah. I said, it's on your right. Well, isn't he sweet? I'm 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 kind of I'm thinking of tray. I've been here. I've been on a bunch of different train lines and stuff in Argentina, but none of them have bathrooms. Is this like a common thing in like all trains? 
just like no matter just all of them have bathrooms because I, I was like I've been nope they don't have them here I'm, I'm thinking but I've never been on a train that has a bathroom anywhere on like on the train so that's interesting right? way through the walkway came around I said are you after the toilet he said yeah I said it's on your right I shouldn't have let him go first as he took ages and it would be my stop soon the dog waited outside the cubicle I was gonna stroke it but then I remembered someone telling me that you shouldn't mm -hmm. why not <laughs> Because something to do with uh, the owner should be the only one who who sort of deals with that dog, and you shouldn't. F well, sort of... you shouldn't stroke it because you'll cover it in fucking lemon cake. <laughs> no, but, but just because you know, if you if you stroke it and that, it it might like like me and want to go off with me, and he'll come out and be lost and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not the reason, but okay. Something to that effect. A few people have sent this in, including Paul, the part animal Parker. For some reason, we've just assumed he's in school. Another I don't think there's any animal. actual proof of that. But do you I, reckon, think... I reckon he left in June and he's doing sort of bits and pieces, but he's still not a party animal. Do you think, I mean, do you think he can hold down a job? Is he just partying so hard that... He can hold down a job. Um, he often arrives late. Sure. And the, and the boss who's in an overall will go, Parker, you're late again. He goes, yeah, talk to the hand. <laughs> yeah. I think that he's the sort of guy that he, can, you know, he'll just happily say, listen, I, can, I survive on four hours sleep. Yeah. Sometimes I go to work, I've not slept at all. But I think he comes in with his uh, 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 headphones blaring, right, on a on a skateboard, okay. and the bloke goes up to him, the old bloke, right, the old fuddy duddy bloke, goes, you, you stupid idiot, you can't there. He goes, he goes, chill out, man, and in two minutes, he's got him dancing. <laughs> oh, I know what he's like. What? Yeah, he is just like, he just can't resist it, because he's... Even the whoever had to animate that was like, wait, what? We gotta animate. How do we animate this? Like, this, this made no sense. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's but, just a okay. Fun guy. Yeah. Anyway, Paul and a few other people have sent in this piece of information they've discovered um, from one of the more respected news networks. Um, okay. The headline is this: Female kidney turns lumberjack onto housework. Right. Now. A Croatian lumberjack apparently has claimed that he started enjoying housework and knitting after he was given a female kidney. He claims he's going to sue his local health authority because he says he's become a laughing stock. Um, he used to enjoy heavy drinking sessions and things. Uh, the kidney transplant saved his life, but they okay. never warned me about the side effects. I've developed a strange passion for female jobs like ironing, sewing, washing dishes, sorting clothes in wardrobes, and even knitting. Well, if he likes it, what's the problem? It's nonsense. Mm. It's nonsense. Hold on, though. What makes me laugh is he's become a laughing stock. So what do you do when you become a laughing stock? Tell the newspapers. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Tell the newspapers <laughs> about it, because then that would keep it completely under wraps. Then. But it's the sort he's of medical point. nonsense that Carl would normally come out with. Absolutely. That, the, the, you know, you take on the personality of the person who gave you their blood. <laughs> exactly. It's like those old sort of horror stories, you know, you get given a murderer's hand. Yeah. And you go around killing. But, but there can be certain medical things that would change the way you think and would change you as, as a person. Like Say, like, what? how they can do um, face transplants now, yeah. right? I mean, I, I don't quite understand how this face transplants work because do you get a choice of who, who you have? If, if you have something done to your face no. and you go, you know, it's burnt or whatever or something happens to you and you need well, a people, face transplant... Well, if you, change, if you totally changed your appearance, then you would eventually change because of how people reacted to you. Yeah, but I, So I mean, if you gave yourself the head of an elephant, soon you wouldn't, you wouldn't be yourself because I wouldn't of the... have it. I wouldn't have that. That's what I'm saying. If they had a catalogue yeah. and they said, here's some faces you can have, pick which one you want, yeah. would you be looked upon badly if you go, do you know what? I don't really like the look of any of them. Can oh I just wait God. for a better face? Or at this oh moment in time, have you just got to take what's on offer? Carl, there's no one looking through catalogues at faces they might be able to have in no, the No, they face do now because of the face transplant thing. But who are now. these people putting their face up for? Uh, they wait till someone. Yeah, I know, but at some point. Well, I tell you what, I would not have a face transplant if I haven't seen the face before I'm going to have it. You. <laughs> you have to laugh. I want to see what I'm having. Because I could this end up with anything. Awesome. You mentioned elephant's head. What, do you know what I mean? Whose head are they going to use? Is it the latest thing that's died? Oh, well, this got run over before. Yeah, I'll stick this on your head. <laughs> where did this come from? Where is his mind? Where, where are these faces queuing up to be popped on a skull? Where do you think they have got time to, to put well, all these... Maybe this is why it won't catch on. I don't know. <laughs> this is extraordinary. I love how, it, I love how your... he made it cosmetic. 
it's not like people that need a face transplant don't really have a face anymore. No, no, it's purely cosmetic to look better. Like, it's totally a thing. I've heard the existence of this pamphlet, and now you're defending it, even though we don't know it even exists. And you're this skull on a, on a hospital bed going, I'm not having that, I don't like the look of him, he looks a bit shifty, oh, I don't like that, oh, no. Can I ask this now? Let's say you, we were both, we passed away, sadly, in something terribly tragic. Again, uh, the with this. The nation, it mourned. You know, it's, it's terrible. It's like one of the great national disasters. Right. But you, at the same time, you survived the accident, OK, but your face is hideously disfigured. You can take either Ricky's face or mine uh -huh. to have. I'm surprised you're asking this, though, Steve. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just, it doesn't seem like any of them is, like, a great option. Oh, thanks. And this is what I'm saying about the catalogue. If, th if those two were on offer, I might go, do you know what? Pop in again tomorrow. Bring in another booklet. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Anne-Marie. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven-months-old baby. Um, oh, that God. cannot be a good idea. And no, she says yeah. this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh... <laughs> Okay, years later, do, I, I can I, I can Google this. Wait, does Carl Pilkington have children? Well, we've never seen. Is he still with Suzanne too? Two thousand twenty-two. Carl Pilkington gives me wife. Children. Not a thing. He does not have children. In 2020, Carl said he chose not to have kids. There you go. Okay, I was wondering. I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by okay. its mistakes, it'll probably grow up all right. But there are some mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah, true, true. driving a car well, the wrong way down a motorway. <laughs> um, test, testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? Oh, These God. are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. You, you can tell them that. <laughs> but, yeah, but, what that I mean is, but what I mean is there's, there's certain things that... I, I just think that there was a kid who grew up in our, in our avenue, right, on the estate, who, when it was born, right, we kind of thought, it's got no chance, this kid, because okay. its man was, was a bit of a rumman. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, a woman, the, where, where's that? No, just, just like, you know, she like going out and having a fag and like having a drink and she's never at home. It's the one who had the, the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. <laughs> but it's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it, if you want to find out about the horse in the house. But uh, she had a kid and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good-looking kid. Yeah. She was surprised because, like, you know, the man wasn't that good-looking, the dad was a bit rough. But okay. it, it came out. And she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, look at this I've had. And she was, she was chuffed with it, because it's probably, like, one of the newest things she's ever had, because everything else was always sort of... Second hand. Second hand and what have oh, yeah. you, but suddenly she's got this brand-new little baby, right? OK. Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went... <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> oh, God, OK. It looked, it looked rough already. Right? Already? And... All that, that just happened because that's that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it used to, it had, like, a patchy head. Um, it's hair, it, it's what? Just, it had a patchy head? A yeah, patchy like head, hair? it's just sort of... Patchy hair? Uh, sort of it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't a North American Indian. What do you mean, a uh, patchy hair? Just, just his hair was patchy. Oh, he used to go. chase sort okay. of cars and stuff. <laughs> it's cars, hey, sorry! Cars. Just, what do you mean? It just that's what he did for his... Sorry, uh, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. <laughs> But, but all I'm saying is that, at the end of the day, what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> what? Okay, right. Did no, you? that time I when I was in... <laughs> trying to follow his logic path, trying to maybe hop on on his train of thought, and then he just said, what now? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Did well, you... that time when I was in, in Wales <clears throat> and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that, yeah. and I just picked up a big rock, right, chucked it off the edge, and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed the fellow was walking down below. Jeez. Oh, man. And I missed his head by, like, inches. Now, 
I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or like, off a cliff or anything. And right. it only took one man to almost lose his life for you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's yeah, how you yeah. learn your lessons, yeah. isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm going to chuck this off here. I just picked it up and chucked it. And, like, <laughs> as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. That's a little <laughs> mantra. Right? Oh, right. And. You okay. live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that, <laughs> but let it roam about. <laughs> Great. There's the advice for you, Anne Marie. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven month old baby roam about. There you go. Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. <laughs> ages. Um, and they just they, okay. they can't comprehend how, well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone who, for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's okay. reassuring, I think. You know, we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. It's philosophy, isn't it? It's, yeah. I mean, it's really <laughs> unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. Because there's a... I read on the email... There is a saying in, in Argentina that's basically there's someone for everyone, but is it is... Ah, I've forgotten it now. <laughs> I, hay un roto para cada descosido. Okay, there we go. I think that's it. I might have said it backwards, but yeah. There's, uh, for everybody that's been undone, like, descosido is undone by being sewn, so, uh, like, unsewn or undone. For everybody, for every person that's undone, there's someone else that's broken to, like, <laughs> to match. And it's kind of the same thing, but, like, you both have to be broken to be able to be, you know, for each other. So that's kind of messed up, but there you go. Little tidbit. Well, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um, it's something about everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent. And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there. And that. I like the Chinese. There's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Okay. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about... Um, okay. Too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. Why, well, why is well, that's I don't know I don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but <laughs> I heard it was too many cooks. Well, it was all it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, sorry, I mean it's I having a go at the camel how... and it shouldn't, but, but it's just you know it's just it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let you let twelve people in the room have their say it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised, whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? <laughs> I, knew it. Oh, I mean, I've man. always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. <laughs> well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other, I'm, I'm going to throw some animals at you. So I, I'm saying this was before <laughs> he went to Jordan, I think it was. Petra? Yeah, and crossed on the camel. You tell, I'll, the I'll, camel you that broke down, by the way, that was fine. Improved them if you'd have been designing them, OK? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And what, what, where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? What, what, how could you improve it? Like the camel, you'd go lose the arm. Okay. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. Okay. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um. And and give it some bones because I don't understand all this. It getting in a jar. It turned into like Squidward. <laughs> when does it want to get in a jar? 
So <laughs> well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. No, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones. But <laughs> I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've you've said you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. Okay. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? <laughs> oh God, I love it. you can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe. Um, Shorten the neck. What what are they adding <laughs> to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world, no, but is I it? Thought, but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot the, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but they seem to be a lot of animals. I love it. I love it. He thinks everything needs to be useful, and it's the cutest thing ever. It's like... It's like... It's such a mind, like it's such a mindset of a child that that every, every animal should have a purpose and a meaning and be useful. Like... What's that? I, like, I love it. Do you think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? Oh, there's I'm a just lot saying, of doubling up. There just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah. So and you want you want you you do, you get it down to like eight animals that represented all of them. So um, okay. Who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, I mm. would have gone like, hang on a minute. We've, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown. Oh. And have a clear out. <laughs> he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. to be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. With so, you be, so you believe with Noah management. as well? You, well believe, you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to, to cage two of every species? You actually believe that as fact, dear? <laughs> well, it's, it's out there in book form. Brilliant. Uh, in uh, book form. We haven't okay. answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Just oh. her. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> question i i can't i can't even remember how we got how did that happen i was so into it and i didn't even realize <laughs> what oh and he didn't answer okay oh chimpanzee that monkey you okay. there was this um airline and um it's having a lot of problems and, and a what, lot of pilots too tall yeah the cabin was so tiny only bananas were allowed in the cockpit for fuel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. there, there was a lot of strikes going on, right? Sure. Because um, I don't know what it was about. It was over money or whatever. Yes. And the, well, whatever. Get, get someone that doesn't need money. <laughs> yeah, but but, well, but what else could you pay something in, well, Rick? I mean, peanuts. Peanuts. So, okay, peanuts or fruit, yeah. So anyway, the, the boss of the airline, the, oh. he had, like, one pilot who he could trust, right? And that was his son. Right. <laughs> but the okay. problem is, with a lot of these planes, you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he's like, if only I had two sons. But he didn't. There's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. As, is it, as, this a, he runs an airline? He runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads. But the problem is a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that oh, he's struggling here. We but how can they yeah. just, just close it down? No, no way. You can't do that, no, Rick. Of course you can't. It's costing him a fortune if he closes it down. Yeah, yeah, but what one plane's not going to make a difference in an airline, is it? No, no, no. It's mm. all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. So the son... He's mm. flying the planes and that. He's getting worried for his dad because of his business. It's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't worry about it. We've found someone who you can work with. He said he's staying over near the sort of quarantine area where oh, all yeah. the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right. Okay. They won't be looking in there. They won't no. bother. No. So he's like, all right. Uh, well, there's no animal you. that could be a co-pilot. That's why. I'll see you. Uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. Like, he'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah. Sure. So anyway... He gets in there, he meets them. At first, a little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with, but Why? he's thinking, as long as I can keep my dad's business alive, I can Not keep with a one job. plane. Everyone's happy. Then one day, mm. what happens is a little bit of a, little bit of a problem. Oh, uh, dear. Well, what well, happened is uh, one woman who was on the, on the <coughs> plane got a bit peckish. Right. right. And said, uh, said to the air host, this woman said, oh, a little bit peckish, have you got any sort of nibbles and that? She went, uh, no, I've got, got a sandwich. She said, I don't really want a sandwich. You want something, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just like nuts. a bag of nuts or something. Nuts, well, are yeah. they not giving those out yet? So, no, the they title. don't give it for some reason. She was like, look, we've, we've stopped giving out the nuts. We can get you That's a sandwich. Strange. And the woman's yeah. like, I don't want a sandwich. Yeah. I just want some nuts. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? A sandwich is quite a big meal. And whatever. I just yeah. want some nibbles. Just want some nuts. Well, that's not available. So Done. I can't, End can't, of story. Can't so she said, well, you're saying there aren't any nuts. 
She yeah. said, but earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit, right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes and two bags of nuts. <laughs> she said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilot's getting Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So, Let's go home. <laughs> Well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. He can't have eaten them. I want you, you can't go no, no. I know this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go over because no, I feel no, like I'm being lied to. No, you can't. So she goes, starts, no, and, no and the way. pilot can well, hear all this anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door. Right? Yeah. She gets a glance in. Yeah. The monkey sat there with headphones. Fucking bollocks. And that's just like how it ends. Oh man, I was I was wondering when they were gonna get okay to the nuts. It wasn't the nuts I thought it was. Huzzah! <laughs> ah, I just love. <coughs> oh, sorry. I just love this show. It's just fabulous. Like this, it's, it's just I understand why everybody recommends it and everybody likes it. I understand why these shows have the, the amount of views that they do and stuff. It's just, it's good. It's good TV or whatever. But um, love it, absolutely love it. Anyway, guys, I'm, I'm kind of wondering when they stop with the monkey news because somebody said that when the diary appears, it replaces the monkey news, but there was both. So they made the diary a reoccurring thing. And I, like, I, I'm, I'm still surprised at how much monkey news there has to be a point there like has to be one week i don't know if they do this daily or weekly or whatever but there has to be one where they're like i'm sorry i didn't get a monkey story for today there was nothing <laughs> you know what i mean like i get that these aren't like current and in, in their moment current stories but like there has to be a point where like dude i or i forgot or i couldn't find anything or you know just whatever like this kind of seemed like a really 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 half-assed monkey news <laughs> to be totally honest so i imagine they're gonna end that soon but anyway there you go um that's it guys i watched i saw i loved it i just i love it i don't know if it was the best episode out of the eight i've seen but you know they're all just entertaining and fun and i like them so anyway, whatever you have to do, guys, have a great one. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks, everybody, for all the support and everything. And speaking of thank yous, ta-da!